OK, we're briefly going to go through the connections needed to do uh, P10 and P11. So the first thing is the function generator. And we're going to use the 50 ohm connection here and just twist it on. Now, lots of controls on the function generator, of course, but we're, we're asked to set up a sine wave. So it's going to be a sine wave over here. I'm going to press that button there. I don't know if you can see that. It's a sine wave. And it needs to have a frequency. The frequency dial is here. And these are the frequency buttons here. We're asked for a 1 kilohertz frequency, so we take the next value up. So the closest to that is 3K. So we press the 3K button here, and we adjust this dial here until it reads about 1K. Ah, that's close enough for me. The, next, the other thing, you're asked for an amplitude. Remember, amplitude is the peak of, of the sine wave, and that's this button here. And it should be 5 volts. So we take away the attenuator. Remember, the attenuator makes the signal smaller. And we adjust this dial here. Make sure the DC offset is on zero. We adjust this dial here until we get an output of 5 volts. Now, one thing to be aware of is the function generator has a peak-to-peak. -peak. OK, so peak-to-peak -peak is twice the peak value. So to set this up correctly, we should have 10 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. And that is all you need to do for the function generator. Next, we come to the oscilloscope. So first things, we've got a choice of two channels, but we're going to use channel one. Thank God for video editing. So there's channel one connected up. Channel one is the red trace here. And we're asked for, we've got a peak signal of five volts. Now, our red channel, which we look at down here, is set at two volts per square. So each square going up vertically is two volts. So I think that would give us a reasonable reading. The other thing we have to be aware of is the time elapsed per square. Now, at the moment, that's on 100 milliseconds. Now, to get this, to get a sine wave to repeat for one square, this would need to be on one millisecond. But I'm going to set it to 500 microseconds, or 400 microseconds. There. So that's using this dial here to adjust that setting there. And this dial here does the vertical setting. The coupling is DC. So if we press the H1 button there, and we can select AC at the top here, because it's an AC signal that we're going to measure. And that pretty much sets up your scope. So the next thing we need to do is connect the scope to the function generator. So what we do, join the negatives together like this and then just hook the probe onto a convenient spot on your crocodile clip like that that's both of them connected up now we note something interesting I uh, set up the function generator to be 10 volts peak to peak but we can clearly see here that this sine wave is nowhere near 10 volts peak to peak. And that can only mean one thing, really. Either we've got a bad connection, or on our probe, we've got a little attenuator just there. And that's set to times 10. So when I move that to times 1, we should see a dramatic improvement in our signal. And you can see that. The other thing is that the signal's moving across the screen. It's quite annoying. And what we would need to do there is set up something called the trigger control. The trigger sets is there to, 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 to get a stable display. <clears throat> and we've got the trigger level, which is over here. That's the trigger control there. And the trigger cursor will be on the screen somewhere. We're going to need to move that up. The other thing you want to do, <laughs> you definitely want to check, trigger menu, check that the trigger is set to channel one and we can see on our scope that the source is channel two there so we need to set the source to channel one at the top here and you can immediately see 
that when you set that source to channel one, and when, when we've got the trigger here, there's the trigger, that's the trigger line there, we get a nice stable display on our scope. So that's basically how to set up a scope with a function generator. And now the next thing we, we want to do is connect that up to a circuit, to our circuit.